Hi there, I'm Steve Kaufman here again to talk about language learning. And today I'm going to talk about, um, we call it the strategy of listening or the strategic nature of listening uh, from a, a number of different perspectives. Uh, and these are a number of thoughts that have been kind of going through my mind uh, as I continue listening to my Arabic and Persian. You know, learning a language is a long distance run. So we have to have a strategy. Uh, there are, might be sort of short-term tactics, but you have to have a strategy for the long haul. And to me, the most strategic thing we do is listen. Listening and listening comprehension is at the core of everything. When I read in another language, I have to hear the language. I have to be able to sub-vocalize. This is particularly true when I read in languages like Arabic and Persian, where at least as yet to me, it's not immediately obvious how the words are pronounced. It was certainly too true when I was learning Chinese. I had to have a, a sort of a level of, of listening comprehension. I had to hear the words in order to be able to read them. And the reading activity or the activity that I do reading on my iPad using Link to acquire words is all sort of a tactic to aid in my main strategy and my main strategic goal, which is to achieve a high level of listening comprehension. But of course, I'm able to retain the words better if I read them, if I see them, and then I hear them. So I need the reading in order to make the listening comprehensible. And sometimes people ask, well, how do you start listening if you don't know anything? Well, that's one of the magic moments in language learning uh, by doing the mini stories, for example, a lot of material with a lot of repetition and a lot of basic, you know, high frequency verbs, uh, you know, languages like for me was the case with Turkish and Persian and Arabic and Greek, which are just noise through repetitive listening, they start to have meaning. And so you sort of get a toehold. But once you're through those, and I've listened to my 60 mini stories in Persian, Arabic, and so forth, 30, 40, 50 times. I can't continue listening to them, even though I, I still have little areas where I've forgotten words, I gotta move on. So then strategically, I move on to, in the case of Arabic, podcast from mostly France 24, uh, and in the case of uh, Persian, to the Fardo podcasts that are put out by the uh, Radio Free Europe people. But there it's difficult, however, I notice just by listening, I understand more and more, not just by listening, because I also invest the time in reading and listening and saving words so that now uh, the France Fat Cat podcasts have 15 to 20% unknown words, whereas it used to be 40%. So even though probably I'm, I don't speak that much better, I understand more. I notice more words that I know when I'm listening. And so, and so it's all focused on this, this sort of listening comprehension. One of the things that I've started doing and which I want to mention and get some reaction from people is on the Persian, I was able to find people in Iran, in one case, an Iranian person who's been traveling in India to create these stories where they talk about themselves, whatever they're doing, things that interest them, what they've done in life, what they've studied. And so these are five minutes long, seven minutes long. They speak them first, then they transcribe them. We have these in Persian, it's called The Iranians, and it's quite interesting. There's, I think, 16 or 17 stories. But then I had them, particularly this one uh, collaborator, uh, create stories, excuse me, create questions the way we do for the mini stories. Now, I am always against being asked questions uh, about things that I have read or listened to. That is, if I am asked to try to remember and say in my own words what happened in the story. However, I think it's tremendously beneficial to be asked, uh, to be told the answer, then ask the question, and then get the answer again. So, uh, for example, if the story is about, uh, you know, Sahra who travels in India and visited a yoga uh, clinic, so the, the statement might be, Sarah spent five days in the yoga clinic in Pune. That's the statement. The question is, did Sarah spend 
10 days in the yoga clinic in Pune? And then the answer is no, Sarah didn't spend 10 days. She spent five days. So I don't have to think of anything. I don't have to remember anything. The answer is there, but I, I have to answer either yes or no, or when or where or how type of questions where the answers are largely there. So it's, it's kind of exposure. And th these are tremendous because you're really able to focus in on that particular bit of vocabulary. So now I'm thinking with the France Vaid Cat, like originally when I had these stories done, I hadn't th thought of adding these questions to them. Now that I've asked Sahra to do the questions and answers, and I find it very beneficial, uh, now I'm thinking it, it would be an interesting experiment. I don't know if there are Arab speakers out there that would be interested in helping me on this, where you take, say, a France 24 podcast, which might be about the situation in Palestine or uh, in Libya or the different things that uh, elections in Algeria, whatever they're talking about on France 24 in Arabic, and come up with 10 statements, okay? Recently in, uh, you know, the reaction to the um, Trump uh, so-called deal of the century in the Arab world has been mostly negative. That's a statement. Then the question is, has the reaction to the Trump deal of the century uh, to solve the uh, uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict been well received, received in the Arab world? That's a question. The answer, no, it has not been well received. It has largely not been well received. So that then is taking something that was said in the podcast, turning it into a statement question answer and having 10 of these or 20 for that matter, because some of these podcasts are quite long. Uh, and <laughs> some of these, I, I got to be very careful with these Arabic podcast discussions, because if there's three or four people there, guaranteed they're all going to be talking at the same time. And it's very difficult to hear what they're saying. I, I got to give full marks to the transcriber who's able to sort out who's saying what. So it's best if there's only two, because then at least, you know, you have a better chance of having only one person talking at once. But that's okay. So the point is, there's again, a strategy vis-a-vis -vis improving my listening comprehension. And uh, so I'm going to be doing more of that. You'll be able to find these uh, at link, of course. And uh, we have one person who's helping us uh, on the Persian. If uh, I'm going to have to try and look for someone who can do the same on the Arabic, and I want to experiment going into my uh, podcasts, which are largely on political subjects, and then extracting, say, 10 statements with a corresponding question, and then the corresponding answer. And all of this is to build up my listening comprehension. So that, and, and so ultimately for me, okay, the goal in learning a language is to speak, obviously. But I know from experience that if I understand well, if I understand these political podcasts, if I understand movies, like my wife, wife is watching this, uh, the Resurrection Turkish uh, serial on Netflix, and I've kind of dropped my Turkish, but if I can understand everything they were saying, um, I will be able to speak. I may speak poorly at first, but very quickly I will catch up because all of that passive vocabulary, all of that solid listening comprehension capability will activate so that strategically the goal of language learning, I've said this before, and they should do it in schools as well, should be comprehension, listening comprehension, and the speaking ability will come with the need or the opportunity as long as the person is willing to go for it and not worry about making mistakes. So there you have it, the strategic importance of listening as a sort of the key element, the key strategic goal of, of certainly of my language learning and some discussion about the use of these statement question answer uh, uh, techniques in order to make you know, these things that I'm listening to that are now kind of a little difficult for me as I go from the mini stories to, you know, genuine authentic content, that a, a way to make those more comprehensible is to create these, you know, statement question answer, uh, you know, uh, bits of content where you're going to get more repetition of some of the key vocabulary. So uh, that's kind of what was running through my mind. I am going to be pursuing this idea of of getting these statement question answers attached to some of the podcasts that we have in our library at link and uh yeah thank you and i look forward to your comments bye for now